Thank you, Philippe. Thank you for coming. Uh, today's presentation it is a user experience uh, presentation. We shared the same uh, topic with uh, I, I shared the same topic with my colleague from IBM Silicon Valley Lab, Michał Białecki, and. Okay. And we uh, together prepared uh, some issues uh, based on my, my customer uh, side. And uh, this is, okay, much better. Oh. Okay, okay, thank you. And th this is objectives uh, for today's presentation. It doesn't work. Okay, we we will f f we will discuss some issue from our custom from my customer side and uh, and uh, Michal will tell you some words about uh, 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 about <laughs> uh, about SQL and the best practices and uh, and before we start, I I, I would like to uh, tell you a few words about company I work for. I have been working for 17 year, 16 years as a database specialist in one of the largest mainframe projects in uh, Central and Eastern Europe. In the Poland, in Poland, there is the the biggest one, and uh, and my my company presence uh, looks like this. Okay. Before we start, a few words about uh, the complex environments because uh, it is very hard for us to 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 take care of of SQLs in this such a complex environment. There is more than 60 terabyte uh, of production data for those of you who like precision. I listed some numbers, and this is uh, the the. The most important thing uh, on this slide we we can we have uh, we have more than 150 unique SQLs uh, weekly. Thousand. Thousand. Close <laughs> 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 150,000 unique SQL weekly, and it is uh, we have uh, configured uh, our uh, maintenance as well, and so we have uh, more than uh, almost f uh, four thousand call group definition and uh, as you can see this is a very complex environment and more than 400 thousand objects to maintain and every year we add to the to the our uh, environment more than uh, 30 thousand new objects it's a very complex environment and okay uh, okay, so now the question, uh, why SQL can perform badly? So there are, there are few reasons why SQL can per per perform badly. First of all, the database design. The data model is very important, how you partition, what index <coughs> you're adding, what columns you have, and so on. Um, application and SQL sta statement. How you code your SQL is very important as well. Uh, the third thing, which is uh, very often overlooked, is to have the complete statistics for the query or for the workload. Sometimes it happens that optimizer is not able to do a uh, good judgment on which access path to choose because we users are providing to the optimizer two contradictive statistics. For example, the index statistics differ from the statistics for the table. So having up-to-date statistics and suited to your queries is very important as well. Uh, the, third, uh, the fourth thing is to have enough system resources. By system resources, I mean CPU, number of CPU, memory, read pool, sort pool, uh, and proper defined WLM policy. Unproperly defined WLM policy, policy can kill everything, like long running threads in discretionary mode, can lock resources, can uh, have excessive locks on the tables, so the other queries also will suffer. And the last, but also need to mention that optimizer is very smart, but 
we are not covering millions of combinations of SQL that users or the tools are producing. So sometimes optimizer has limitations, right? <laughs> so we are enhancing those limitations. We are fixing also the defects uh, with the APARs or with the new releases. So I will be, will be talking about this as well later on. And just experimentation actually will have few examples and those old examples would be the examples of the why SQL can pr perform badly just based on this list as well. So with this 150,000 SQLs that they're running, they just isolated just few examples that mm. they met. Okay, we have prepared for this presentation a few examples, uh, and th this is the first one, the first uh, uh, example of uh, coding SQL. Uh, so one of <coughs> developers decided to add to join part of SQL plus zero, and, and uh, instead of uh, matching columns three, this, uh, this is an original uh, access path for this SQL without plus zero, and with, without uh, matching columns three, he he had uh, he or she I don't <laughs> I don't know <laughs> uh, matching columns one, and uh, this SQL uh, performed very badly. And uh, on this table, there was only one index, one index on the table, and uh, I I don't know uh, what is the reason behind. Uh, adding uh, plus zero for this SQL. It is the first time, uh, the first SQL who, uh, which performed badly, and this is the example how maybe not to code <laughs> SQL. <laughs> okay. And what will happen if your SQL are uh, really ugly? In our, in my uh, client, uh, client. Uh, a site, it, uh, it caused uh, lack of uh, system resources and uh, CPU consumption and an intensive I.O. operation and of course lock time, lock wait time and uh, deadlock and timeout. And so we need to be here acceptable response time and system stability and to have, uh, we need to have our SLA so under control. And today's presentation is about, uh, first of all, about uh, rules and best practices and how can I apply them and uh, how DB2 can help us uh, with SQL and better access uh, path. And Michal will talk about uh, a very, very easy uh, and very, uh, very, very, ba nice, very basic and nice stuff about uh, optimizer. And at the end of the presentation, Michal will be talking about query rewrite. Okay, so let's start from the basics, uh, just to set the level. <laughs> so how DP2 is processing your query? Uh, this is a very easy concept actually, but first what we do is we check the syntax, we check the authorization, and then what we do is we, we are trying to do the query rewrite. Query rewrite is kind of uh, automatic way that we um, detect some patterns that we can replace with some other choices, with some other uh, predicates combinations. Uh, later on, we are providing the statistics and ZPARMs uh, to the optimizer, and optimizer generates the list of the possible access paths, and from this list, we are selecting the best one in terms of uh, CPU cost. We build the internal structures called the runtime tree, and then we execute the runtime tree. So this is the true for both dynamic and static SQL. Uh, so important to mention is that query rewrite happens before we go to optimizer. Uh, and here are some basic uh, definitions of uh, what is stage one, stage two predicates. I will explain it on example because one example can tell you more than just the dry definitions. So here you have the, the table, which is based on the five columns, and you have the index, which is based on the sum of those columns. Here is the simple SQL with four predicates. And since we have 
index on the C1, C5, and C4, this first predicate would be indexable and matching <coughs> with the match calls equals one. The C2 predicate doesn't have any index, so the table will be accessed via table space scan. But still, we are having the ranges that we can fetch the data directly from DASD just based on the ranges. So this will be the stage one predicate. Stage two predicate, the difference between stage one and stage two is that for the stage one, we are fetching the data based on some ranges, just knowing how the data should look like. So we're asking the data manager and buffer manager to provide us their ranges. And with the stage two, we fetch first all and then filter, for example, in the work file. So for example, for this predicate, we, we have the function here, varchar, not like A. So in this case, we the only way that we can process it is we fetch all the data and then we apply the filtering. So this is called stage two. Uh, usually, it's, it's good to avoid stage two predicates. It's good to have indexable and stage one predicates. Uh, the fourth, is the list is not exhaustive, it's just an example. This is the screening predicate. What by screening, I mean that we have the index on C1, C5, and C4, but we have the C1 predicate here. We don't have C5. So what we do here is we fetch all the data that from the index uh, where this predicate, predicate applies, and then we filter based on this predicate without looking at this C5. C5. So this is called screening, where we just retrieve this, the, the range, qualified by this predicate, and then we search for this one. Um, all the stage one and stage two predicates are mentioned in the SQL reference, and this is what you should be giving to the programmers when you migrate to the new versions, because it changes. DB2 is doing a lot of efforts to make, to transform our predicates to be stage one. So over the versions we are adding like, I don't know, 50 more, right? 10 more. Stage one, I mean, how we transform, right, to stage one predicates. <laughs> okay, forget. <laughs> what I was saying that over the versions we are <coughs> adding more stage one predicates, right, to oh the yeah, list. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I cannot tell you the number, but <laughs> Yes. Uh, so <laughs> the question was, is it true that if we have stage two predicates, we have to materialize the, the results before we filter, right? Yeah. That's the question. Yeah, yeah we do, right? Um, I think, uh, I think it's uh, uh, probably have some uh, uh, confusion about uh, the materialization, probably using a different word. In, in fact, we uh, determine stage one, stage two by uh, who is evaluating this predicate. If uh, this predicate evaluates by the data manager, then we call it stage one. And if it needs to be copied from a uh, data manager to that we call RDS in DB2, then it is uh, the stage two predicate. <coughs> I think the performance difference is uh, really, um, uh, it's a uh, full stage two predicate. You need to copy the record from data manager to RDS, so it, it needs to pay the uh, uh, actual performance. Yeah, but, uh, it's, but it's not, it's just streaming it through. It doesn't have to collect all the No, it's not necessary to, right. to materialize. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well basically, we, we use the memory inside DB2. So this is w what we call, that we transform from data manager to RDS. To Uh, and here are some rules and best practices that uh, anyone can apply as well. So first of all, uh, when you do the select, you request only the col columns that you need. It's a bad, bad practice to code, for example, select <coughs> asterisk, because it, your application can suffer in, term, in terms of any application changes or any DDL changes. Your application will need to be rewritten as well. 
you need to filter the rows as soon as possible, as um, much as possible. You need to take care that your data is relational, relational model. What I mean by this is that uh, that you code your query this way, that it uses, for example, the joint predicates instead of, for example, fetching the data from one cursor and the second, and then joining them in the application, which we call stage three, let's say. So outside of DB2. Uh, as I mentioned before, stage one predicates whenever possible, indexable predicates whenever possible. And here is just a nice example just from the book. Uh, and it explains how you can code the predicates differently and how it influences how DB2 is treating them. So here, as you see, we have non-column expressions. Uh, those are non-column expressions, those, those two. And here are column expressions. So in this case, DB2 need to materialize all these rows before applying filtering. In this case, which is the same actually predicate, just transformed by, by hand, by programmer, we are having the column expression here and non-column expression here, which we know the value already when we are comparing. So here, we will not be fetching the older data, but just based on this range. In opposite to here, when we have to materialize, then to do the calculations. So this is quite important. Question. Yes. Can the optimizer that we have to do with yeah, it's actually that's the manually uh, example, but DB2 is, is doing this in many cases, but not, you know, we are not covering all the world. So this not this one. Not this one. <laughs> this is too. This is too complex. This is very tricky. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but you know, su such very simple ones. We have like millions, right? <coughs> uh, if you don't uh, new need any redundant <coughs> predicate, just remove them. And I already mentioned statistics matters as well. Okay, challenges. Uh, I have. Pr this one. Okay, I, I have prepared a uh, few, few SQLs. Uh, there is the the second example from my uh, from my work from my client side. It is uh, it is case all about the data model because the, the problem was with this join. Uh, the join was uh, based is based still on the three columns Valkar uh, two hundred and fifty five. And uh, and DB2 used uh, used this uh, uh, this index uh, for this uh, for this SQL, and it it was a problem with, with SLAs, and it was pro uh, was problem with uh, get pages and uh, and elapsed time, and I believe that th there was a lot of uh, a lot of options to resolve this problem. I, I, uh, and uh, I believe that you can find a better way to, to, to do this, to, to fix this problem. Uh, the challenges main cursor for the application invoke 1,000 thou time per day, segment and table space, application ro run was run uh, with one year context. Uh, these tables uh, are, uh, uh, these tables are dedicated for Every year, for example, uh, every year we add new databases for these uh, tables. But uh, this table, this table is shared for every uh, every year SQL. And uh, we observe, um, of course, matching columns three in the index scan. But uh, we uh, we had a padded option, and the, s the size of the index was uh, 17 gigabytes. And uh, because of the the three columns. All of them varkar and low heat ratio observed on table space, but we had no, f uh, we had not enough uh, uh, memory for for store this table space uh, and uh, index space. The solution for this uh, the, this case is we we had to convert the table space into PB PBR, and uh, and uh, after the change we. We observed less iOS uh, IO uh, and get pages higher hit ratio, and also we uh, we changed our NPI index. This one, oh, 
this one uh, into uh, DPSI and uh, others, <laughs> Polish port and <laughs> and not padded. <laughs> okay, sorry for the. I was not aware of this. <laughs> Polish lesson number one, <laughs> Oras. Uh, and uh, instead of 17 gigabytes, we, we now we have four gigabytes. And uh, but for this SQL, we needed to add uh, uh, where equal uh, the year because we had uh, column a, 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 a year. We didn't want to add uh, indexes with a leading column year, but instead of this, we we uh, changed our SQL uh, <coughs> and added uh, where predicate, and we observed a lot of uh, uh, a lot of managers' happiness after this. The result of this this uh, this uh, work uh, is less CPU per commit and uh, average MIPS uh, uh, was dropped and average get pages it is, uh, it is the total get pages per week and we observed during the week uh, less than uh, than than 20 uh, six percent less get pages and it is all about data model yes so so this is the example of as I mentioned why SQL can perform perform badly so this SQL actually was okay in terms of SQL, if, uh, in terms of coding, but since the index was so big, it didn't fit into buffer pool. So the non-leaf pages were not fitting into buffer pool because the index was 17 gigabytes. So just trimming the index, removing the, I mean not trimming, but changing to not padded option helped a lot. And also adding the additional word predicate, which mm -hmm. was also the question. Uh, my developers decided to use uh, padded option, but I asked them uh, why, and <laughs> they told me that you can change this. <laughs> it <doesn't laughs> so that, that was a random decision, I would say. <laughs> I, I, would, I, I would imagine that if you have frequent updates and when your row is changing, then it, it might help with the insert performance, for example, or update performance. But I, we can uh, we can uh, find out a little bit more about uh, this issue, and uh, I, I we can send an email after the, the session. Okay, it's good, Michal. It's your job to find out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The, the second, my fav favorite uh, SQL, and uh, once again we observed a huge single cost for for uh, for every SQL. Uh, one of developers decided to join using 18 yes. columns and join a uh, session table and uh, static table and uh, and and uh, once again main cursor for the application huge volume of data uh, one of the most important and uh, CPU consuming, consuming applications and, uh, and uh, this application uh, was run uh, during the weekend and need to be uh, done before the job, need to be done before the, the Monday mor morning and uh, it was a huge pressure to, to fix the problem. Application developer's intention was to <coughs> that the access path would be based on on uh, the cluster index and with matching columns eight. Instead of matching columns eight, we had uh, matching columns three. And this this index was dedicated for 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 the, this join. <laughs> but DB2 doesn't uh, didn't <coughs> want to use it, and uh, instead of using a cluster index with cluster ratio one hundred, uh, we observed. Uh, uh, X1 uh, index and you can see uh, DB2 uh, had to, to get more data from table space than from index and this is the indexes and, uh, and, and 
and the solution for and work around. Uh, we were given uh, three solutions, but, but we are still we were still on version nine of db2, and this solution uh, didn't work for us. And uh, <coughs> and uh, a little bit later, I will talk about our work around the result for this uh, change. And we observed less CPU consumption and elapsed time. It, it was uh, the crucial for us to take uh, to 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 have uh, to have uh, uh, this application under control. So, so, and this is example of optimizer limitations. Actually, that that what we see here, we had supporting index for the joint. We had, um, let's say, the best index that we can probably have, but it was not chosen. So this query was quite complex. It was joined on the 18 columns and it involves also the declared global temp table, which has limited statistics, actually. So optimizer was kind of um, lost. <laughs> so in version 9, we, we have given to the customer the workaround, and we are fixing this in version 10 and 11. <coughs> mm -hmm. <coughs> Our uh, workaround uh, uh, was based on DB2 catalog. Uh, we need to needed to change uh, two uh, statistics, and uh, and we did it uh, only for the application, only when application uh, uh, was running, and uh, and this change uh, uh, was for us was uh, easy and uh, safe to implement and in our site we have a uh, dedicated procedure for uh, for this kind of uh, of changes because we can change uh, db2 catalog but ibm opinion about basically don't listen to this guy now <laughs> <laughs> this, this is wrong oh ibm ibm never ever never ever advise to update, update the statistics to override the statistics Overriding statistics is, is extremely dangerous because it affects not only the query that you want to have the access path, but, but it also affects globally all the queries that are using <coughs> the same tables. Actually, what's a little bit excuses Jacek is that they are doing this the smart way. Mm. So before the query is running, they update the statistics. Then the query runs. After the query run, they revert back to original statistics. It was easier for them than to use the opt-in. So they decided to use the statistics override. Mm -hmm. During the uh, during weekends only. Few words about uh, testing. Uh, one more example. Uh, and uh, we have uh, three separated test environments and thresholds set on the lapse time m uh, more than uh, 10 seconds. And tracing class, it is uh, be, be aware of cost for monitoring and and uh, full cup of production. It is a description of our test environment. W why we are talking about test environment? Because this is the, the last example of SQL. I have a contract on uh, our test environment. It is very easy example because we didn't uh, have uh, index for join and uh, where? No index, no statistics, no index for join. Uh, unacceptable CPU and elapsed time for this, uh, uh, this query. And what we, <laughs> what we did, we decided to add two indexes for this column and for this join. The result of uh, adding these indexes was pretty nice. We observed uh, less uh, elapsed time, less CPU time, time, and and uh, the result for another queries was not uh, good enough for us because we we improved this access path and at the same time we destroyed the another one <laughs> because of uh, statistics for uh, leading column for this index DB2 didn't want about uh, this frequency of this column and after the statistics uh, 
DB2 find out and just we uh, we had a problem with one query and conclusion about the testing test access path for as many as possible SQL statement and examine access path potential degradation and keep in mind that new indexes come together with new statistics and uh, usually hard to add but also hard to drop indexes even the, when software is uh, changed and so in our side there is a lot of problem with uh, indexes because uh, because uh, the workload uh, period uh, sometimes is uh, one week one month and and one year we we some application uh, was run every year and so we need to to find out which indexes are not uh, are not used by DB2. Uh, so, so in this case that Jacek mentioned, actually, adding new index was uh, improving one query, but at the same time the other query regressed. So why it happened? It happened because um, there was not enough statistics for the, for the new index in terms of the second query. So they ran the test for the isolated case, but they didn't run the test for the second case. So it turned out on the next day that the other query regressed. So if you're adding the index, you also need to gather the statistics that are suiting not only for one query, but for the set of queries for the workload. So this is really true. But the good news is that uh, we have the free tool to gather the statistics. We have, in version 11, we also have detection of missing conflicting statistics. And we also have the security mechanisms here, like AP reuse, AP compare, and bind query if you want to secure your old access path. Um, okay, and a few words about testing. As we are writing this, this presentation, we are realized that uh, we put false assumption that how we code SQL is most important thing. But as we were finding the examples, it turned out that not only how we code SQL, but what else we would you do to secure that your SQLs are running safely is also to do the proper testing. Usually, usually the uh, development machines are not the size of the production machine. And this is a problem because the access path selection and optimizer is using also the, uh, <coughs> for example, the numbers of the CPUs, the CPU speed, to determine the best access path. And in version, I think in version 11 and then retrofitted to version 9 and 10, we introduced support for the overriding system set settings, the new ZParms, simulated CPU speed, simulated CPU count, which will tell optimizer that it is running the on machine that is, for example, faster. So we can then choose the access path that is the same as the on, the on the production machine. So this is kind of nice way to to full optimizer, not to full, but just to ensure that <laughs> the same what we do in, in development is reflected in the production. So, and here are some uh, just count instructions how you do this. In plan table, we have secret column called IBM service data. And if you select, it's the hex values. If you select uh, some of the values you will get the CPU count, CPU speed. So what usually you have to do is to run this query, a any query actually, explain of any query on the production system and then you will have the CPU count, CPU speed that you can plug into your development system. So here we are... What was... Yes, yes absolutely. But you, you are free, I mean, feel free to take a picture. That's like, come here. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so here you get the values and now you plug, it, plug them in into the profile table and you can start profile command with the, also with the new ZParms, online changeable. And from now, your development system will behave as your production system. So the same access will be, the same access path will be chosen as on the production system. Uh, query rewrite. Uh, I mentioned about query rewrite uh, that it's happening after we parse the query, but before we send the query to optimizer. With the query rewrite, uh, the idea is to give the optimizer more choices to choose the access path. So if we adding some predicates, additional predicates, we are just giving optimizer the more choices to evaluate the cost. Uh, and DSN query table, one of the explained tables, contain the original and transform, transformed query. DSN predicate table, the, the, the hard thing, this is in XML form. Uh, DSN predicate table contains predicates after query transformation. So actually you can select from this DSN predicate table and see how your predicates were transformed by DB2. And here I will talk about a few query rewrite possibilities that DB2 is doing, like on the example of the predicate transitive closure, where by predicate transitive closure I mean when A equals B and B equals C, that implies that A equals C, right? So here we have the original query, and DB2 is also adding this generated predicate transitive closure. What it does here, it just opens new possibilities for the optimizer to choose the access path that we wouldn't have without this predicate. <coughs> so this is the another example where we merge table view. So instead of having the select here, we are just pushing it up to have it here, which also ca cause that we do not materialize it here, but we just select directly here. So it's cheaper now. Similar thing is happening here. Um, so that was version 10, still version 10. So we also do the correlated to non-correlated rewrite. So here we have the stage two predicates. So we need to evaluate this thing first in, in combination to the accounting. But here actually, which is equal statement, we just evaluating it once and then apply it here and this predicate now is indexable. So this is what DB2 is doing. Uh, DB2 also in version 10 and also in version 11 prunes always true and always false predicates. So here is just a list of what we do. When we have the const, when we have the A equals A predicate, it will be uh, removed as true. We have, when we for have, for example, the column is null, and when we know that column is defined as not null, we'll just remove it, because it will never be true. So optimizer doesn't have to evaluate those predicates. In version 11, we do it even more, and Kiwi yesterday was talking about this as well, and yes, uh, before yesterday. I will just explain it on, the, uh, on the examples because it's more visible. Uh, so here we have the example, very simple example, where year of call equals 2012. In version 10 and below, this predicate would be always stage two predicate, unless, uh, okay, uh, unless there is index on the expression, but uh, basically what we need to do here, we need first to fetch all the data and then to apply the function. In version 11, instead of having the built-in function, we are transforming it into between predicate, so the range predicate, which can be also the stage one. If we have the index on expression, which index on expression is on year of call, then we do it, it even more. What I mean more, we don't remove this one, but we just add this one. So here you can see that we are just adding new options to the optimizer, new choices. 
and the same is happening for the for the date sub uh, for the date bit function that instead of date we are transforming it for example to the timestamp and the same is happening with the substring so instead of having the stage two predicates with those easy automatic tricks we are having stage one predicates yes Well, you know, there's all. Uh, so, so the question is, if uh, should we advise the developers to code it this way, uh, bearing in mind that, for example, in version 11, we can change something in the optimizer, not to transform this query this way. I would say we we rarely step back. We usually enhance the product, and this is very good enhancement. So I would say if you have the new application, I'm, this answer is easy for the old applications, right? No one likes to rewrite the old applications, right? So that's why we added this thing. For the new applications, it's up to you. Just code it right or <laughs> code it the, the way that it's, you know, understandable for you, right? <coughs> so for example, I would be very reluctant to code it like this, right? Because this is unreadable. So it's like, okay. You can try, but... Yeah, the reason for the question was, if they code it in line from the phone, yeah. that presumes that you won't go to the new line, you just save the bit part on the phone. Yeah, that's true, but you also need to... Uh, so, so yeah, the, the question is, uh, if you do this prior to, to execution, you will save some CPU for the query rewrite. Yeah, that's true. But, yeah, maybe maybe... That's not a concern, right? That we're saving the CPU for the query, right? Right? Because first of all, you know, for the stat static applications, you do it just once when you bind. Who cares about bind uh, performance, right? <laughs> for the dynamic, yeah, that's uh, that's the valid concern, absolutely. But again, right? You have the the cache dynamics statement cache where the query is already rewritten, and there is no need to do it again. So this is just one time charge, I would say, right? Which doesn't affect much. Yeah, that's true. Absolutely. Uh, so, so the the comment was that we are uh, teaching the developers this way how they should code. This is right, but you know we don't trust that you can teach all the developers. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> it's hard. It's probably easier to you know implement this thing than teach millions of developers, right? So here's another enhancement that we do. Uh, simplify stage two between predicate in version 11 and we also prove more and more predicates like we also always true predicates we remove always false predicates we remove with exception of where or one uh, zero equals uh, one is not removed what this predicate does is actually this the only trick that we document in our documentation saying that if you use this the index access will be not used. And we still, well, it's officially documented, so we cannot just remove it, right? The other tricks were not documented, so. <laughs> hmm? Back? What, wanted to add something? No, it's just, you know, it's, it's the list of the things that we can do. But I will not explain all the list. It's boring. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> and here is an example of, uh, you have the query like this, and you can check in the DSN predicate table how your predicates were rewritten. So what I said already, the year predicate in version 11 
will be rewritten to the between reason, right? The date. Um, the ideas and query table, it's XML format. So Data Studio can format it or any vendor tool can format it as well. This is version 11. Yeah, actually, this also exists in previous versions, but I'm showing just the uh, this year predicate, which is the ver version 11 stuff. And here is how it looks in Data Studio. So you have the query, and here you have the rewritten query, transformed, and conclusions. Jacek. Uh, conclusion. Uh uh, keep in mind data model. The 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 example number two was about uh, UTS uh, table spaces. We converted uh, segmented table space into uh, PBR. And uh, remember about uh, when you want to implement new indexes. Remember of statistics and and. Uh, uh, remember about profiling and statistics advisor and DB2 can help you with transforming queries and remember about best practices and uh, rule of thumb for new SQLs and if you have a question about uh, about uh, SQL on something like this you can use uh, IDAC app to send for today uh, ZOS panel some questions and it would be nice to have uh, audience because this question about not padded best practices for not padded and, and padded is, was excellent and I need to be I, I can send this uh, this question for ZOS panel okay, okay? Yeah. thank you uh, questions questions and answers. And answers. So, so the question was if there is a joint uh, joint condition and there is where predicates, right? Yeah. If it makes sense to combine the where predicates, right? Or it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me it would, right? For, how about you? Uh, my opinion is, uh, of course, the automate. Uh, if you code all the combination, that would be great. But I don't think any developer can take this advice, and that's why Automizer already implement lots of uh, trans. We call predicate transitive closure enhancement. So I think uh, most of the the predicate right now we can do the transitive closure can. I think except uh, you have something like a C1 equal uh, subquery. I don't think we are, we are doing the transitive closure today. That uh, is something probably you need to make your developer aware. Uh, but for subquery, I think uh, we don't do the transitive closure because if we need to apply the predicate twice, that means you need to execute that uh, non-curly subquery twice. So that we don't do so it, but you need to you, you probably need to uh, think about it uh coding that on which side could result better performance but i think for simple predicate we've already done that uh, so uh probably the application developer don't need to worry about uh, coding too much predicate too many predicate in their query so that's my opinion Is always uh, fully materialized. 
Yeah. Yeah. Before I could use them, the into a very complex thing, or if the optimizer uh, will uh, rewrite uh, the the pool uh, theory uh, using the grids. I mean, uh, I, I don't know how if uh, um, the use uh, uh, are always um, the the bad. <laughs> no, I don't think that they are bad, right? But in, in uh, okay. So the question is, uh, the dev some developers are coding the views the way that they. Um, mask the bad table design yeah. and if uh, there is an SQL who is that is using the view if the view is uh, materialized always yeah. so th the answer is no right we don't materialize the, the, the view always right we, we, we will try to merge the view we will try to merge the view so whenever it's possible we will try to merge the view but it's not not always possible we could probably if the usual objective is that if we there are still some restrictions and some scenarios are not always try to merge and uh, we usually uh, we deliver some enhancement to merge more views mm -hmm. that happens during query transformation yes yeah that's that, yeah th that happens during query transformation that's right <coughs> yeah the, the dsn query table right yeah Yeah, yeah, it was materialized then. You actually see the table here, not the view. Yeah. If, if you find a table, you can see the name of that view. Then it's more likely that that view is materialized. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. You, you don't see the name of the view. You see, see the, the base table. table. Yeah, but you have many views, and, and if you can see the transform theory, then you can see the Yes, yes, you, you can see it. 